Hello, test takers. Welcome back to Exam Prep Solutions. And today we've got some more sample problems here. We're going over conceptual dynamics problems. And you're going to want to attempt these before I get into them. Try and answer the questions. Uh, we got two sets of problems here. So let's get right into it. For the first one, uh, the problem uh, states by taking the derivative of the position equation, the remaining equation will calculate what? And we've got four choices here. So A is the slope of the position tangent line. Okay, that's possible the pulse of the particle, the velocity of the particle, or the acceleration of the particle. And so if you've studied dynamics or physics, uh, you know that if you're given a position equation, you can then uh, plug a value in for x, and that'll give you the position of that particle at a certain time t. Now, if you take the derivative of this equation, you're now getting the slope of this position equation. So my answer A might be close, the slope of the position tangent line. It's not the exact definition, or exactly what you're going to get when you take the derivative. Now, we actually know that it can't be B or D because pulse and acceleration are even more derivatives of the position equation. So the answer is actually C, the velocity of the particle. And if you were to take the derivative again of the equation, then you could get the acceleration of the particle. And then lastly, you could get the pulse if you take another derivative of that equation. So that's how that relationship works. And this answer would be C in this case. You get the velocity equation. So that's what this first one is going to be. It starts with position, derivative gets you velocity, another derivative gets you acceleration, and then the final derivative gets you the pulse of the particle, and then you could go on and on and go <laughs> as it goes, depending on what power that first variable was. But that's the progression when it comes to taking the derivative of those equations. Now we're on to the second one. Which of the following would define a frame of reference? So we've got four options here. A planet orbiting the sun, a car moving at a constant speed, a tire swinging from a tree, or any object in free fall. And so the qualifications for a frame of reference is some form of a static place where you can determine how objects are moving relative to that, that place of reference or that static place. So if where you're at or that frame of reference is changing its movement, changing how it is relative to these other objects, then you're not gonna be able to use that as a frame of reference. So if we go through here, a is a planet orbiting the sun. Well, we know that's moving in a circular motion. The acceleration will be changing. It's not going to be completely constant. So it can't be A. B, a car moving at a constant speed. Definitely could be that. C, a tire swinging from a tree, very similar to the planet orbiting the sun. The position is going to be varying. And D, an object free falling, also going to be a varying place to measure. So we need to answer B, car moving at a constant speed, would be an ap applicable place of reference to then measure everything else because it's constant and you can now base all the other measurements off that constant speed and constant location. So those some conceptual questions there covering dynamics. If you have any questions about those problems, leave it in a comment down below. Also, if you want to see any problems or have me any cover any topics on the channel, leave it in a comment down below and please like and subscribe to see more. Anyways, we will see you guys next time.